Today we're going to introduce you to the world of shaders using this very simple black and white one. Alright, if you guys have never used shaders before, then don't worry because it doesn't matter if you've used C Sharp or GD Script because shaders are their own language uh, on their own. It's the ghetto shader language, which I think is based off GSLS or GLS, something like that. I, I think I could be wrong with that. Uh, if I am, feel free to, to correct it. But for this, we're just working with a 2D sprite here, as you see uh, in the tree. No worries, it's just a, a no 2D with a sprite as a child. And we're using the Gato texture as the sprite. And inside of the inspector here, we're just gonna go down to the material section, open that up. We're gonna create a new shader material. All right, then we're gonna go down to the shader property inside of that. And we're going to create a new shader. And I'm just going to call this BW or black and white and hit create. Now you see at the bottom, uh, if it's done automatically, you'll see some code down there and you can just grab and pull this up. So if it doesn't open up automatically, you can go ahead and hit the shader editor down here at the bottom. And let's go ahead and take a look. So the first thing here, we've got shader type up here at the top, and this is set to a canvas item. Now the shader type line here at the top uh, specifies that this is a canvas item shader. And what that means is that means that this shader will be applied to a 2D object in the scene. So this, this type here is very important for your shader to have that right. And since we're using a 2D sprite, we're using canvas item to put, so our shader can go on a 2D object. All right, next up we have this fragment function. And that function is where the main work of our shader is done. That's where it gets complete. And we're gonna put our code in between of this pair of curly braces. So it's gonna be going in here. On default here, we're gonna be sticking into line four. And what this function does is it's basically called once for each pixel on the object being shown. So if we were to take a look here at our texture, every single pixel that we have in this, that comprises of this sprite, this image, this code is going to be ran on it, essentially. So the bigger your image, the more times this is going to run. Let's go into it. What we're going to do is we're going to create a black and white filter for it. And this is actually very simple to do. We're going to start with color and get uh, the RGB of it. Now we're not using RGBA, just regular RGB. And this is a vector three. Now you'll notice in the shader language, it's just vec to vec three, vec four for this and not a vector. It's just shortened down to VEC. And for this, we're using a VEC3. This is followed up with a open and close parentheses as well. And what you notice here is, not well in this case, just yelling at us about invalid arguments. So let's go ahead and address that first. So in this code, what we're going to use is a function called dot. And as you see here, we take in uh, two arguments here. Uh, and uh, what this is basically going to do, it's going to convert the RGB color uh, pixel or the RGB color for each uh, pixel to grayscale. So the dot here is going to be our color vector. And then the three sections after it down there, the three flows that come after is essentially the luminosity. So that's going to affect how bright the red is, how bright or dark the green is, how bright or dark the blue is. 
this is the luminance value of each pixel. So if we go ahead and take a look, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do dot and we're just going to pass in the color dot RGB of it. All right. So we're going to Sorry there for a moment. Okay, so we're gonna convert our color RGB here into grayscale. And then the second argument is a vet three. And my three button's not working there. So I have to select them drop down. And this vector three has three values between zero and one. And all of these are gonna affect the red channel, blue channel, and green channel. Sorry, it should be red, green, blue. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set and you could use any numbers for this. I'm going to go 0 0.299, the first one. Uh, 0 0.587 for my second one. And for my blue, I'm going to go ahead and use a 0 0.114. Now, all of our arguments are in, but you'll notice an error at the bottom. And if you're using C sharp, or if you're used to using it, then this is something that you're already going to be used to, but if you're using GD script, this is something new that's going to have to adapt to. Because like in C sharp and C++ and other languages, at the end of our code here, we have to put a semicolon to end our lines. And you can go ahead and save that. All right, so uh, I just noticed I was writing that in uh, uh, the wrong shader. It wasn't actually inside of the one that I created, just because I was messing around beforehand, but there we go. Once you add that semicolon in, you should see your sprite here now turn into black and white. And if we were to tweak these values, for example, the blue here at the end, since this has a lot of blue in it, if we change this from 0.114 to say 0.714, you'll see just how that affects it, how much brighter that gets. So the way you tweak these values is really going to affect how light and dark each of these values are going to end up being. As you can see, just by messing around with some of these numbers, you can get yourself a pretty good idea. So hopefully that gives you guys a gives you guys a, an idea of how I guess some of these words are with shaders, or shader an idea of how a shader is formatted and structured, as well as you now have yourself a very simple uh, black and white shader that you can put on a 2d object so now you can i don't know maybe we can do some uh some kind of gameplay thing uh where maybe you're black and white for certain situations um certain parts of your game and then maybe your character or your player has color and a uh, different scenario or different mini game or something i don't know but <laughs> there you go there's uh an introduction into uh, getting started with shaders and this should work with with Gato 3.x I don't see why not this language should transfer over same language right but if it doesn't I was using four with this but anyway, <laughs> instead of rambling on um, that's it take care have yourselves a good one and I'll see you guys in the next one